on the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. A caravan of migrants seeking asylum reached the U.S.-Mexico border and are told there is no more room. I'm Hannah Doba with more on their month-long journey. With the rapid growth that Gallatin County is seeing, water is a valuable commodity. Coming up, I'm Medeiros Babb, and I'll let you know what this means for farmers. This could be the future of emergency response. I'm Chris Martinez at the California Institute of Technology, where researchers are developing an autonomous drone ambulance. 30 on this uh, Monday. Chet Lehman with you here. Missy O'Malley is off today. Our top story, a caravan of migrants arrived at the U.S. border over the weekend, but so far none of them have been allowed to enter. CBS's Hannah Doba is in New York with the story. Hundreds of migrants, most from Central America, arrived at the U.S.-Mexican border on Sunday. For many, it was the end of a month-long journey to get to the United States. But the caravan's members learned they would have to wait before they could even apply for asylum. Officials with U.S. Customs and Border Protection said their facility south of San Diego was full. The migrants won't be processed until space is available. Are you watching that mess that's going on right now? with the caravan coming up. The caravan has become a flashpoint in the debate over U.S. immigration policy. At a rally in Michigan on Saturday, President Trump said it's an example of why stronger laws are needed. If a person puts their foot over the line, we have to take them into our country. We have to let them go to come back to court in like a year. Only one problem, they don't come back. On Sunday, immigration rights activists held a rally on the U.S. side of the border. Some have been meeting with the migrants in Mexico. Sadly, we are expecting them to be in a detention, awaiting asylum at least for six months. For now, the caravan's members are camped out in Tijuana as they await a chance to enter the U.S. Anadoba, CBS News, New York. Now we're told U.S. officials have said they will prosecute any migrant who makes false statements when applying for asylum. Closer to home, the National Weather Service in Missoula has issued a flood warning for the Clark Fork River above Missoula until 845 this, on Tuesday. River forecast to crest at 10.1 feet this morning. Weather Service cautions that flooding of low-lying areas adjacent to the river is possible, threatening streets in the Orchard Homes area of Missoula. That's video from over the weekend. National Weather Service advises people not to enter across flowing water or water of unknown depth. Clark Fork River is expected to recede starting Monday afternoon. Also flooding threatening homes in the Helena area. Sunday morning, Lewis and Clark County Emergency Management Team sent out a Facebook alert saying that residents in parts of Helena need to monitor the situation closely. One homeowner, Danielle Bauer, said not only is her backyard flooded, her basement is as well. Danielle's husband, family members, and friends help put sandbags up against the house to prevent more damage. And I think we're just on the beginnings of that, Matt, as uh, we, we start to uh, see spring actually. And uh, uh, nearly uh, everywhere we're seeing above average, uh, mm -hmm. even well above near historic snowpack. And that means that eventually that snow's got to go somewhere. Yeah, yeah unfortunately, yeah. the lowlands are going to see it. That's right. Now, areas shaded in green are some of the areas that we are concerned with some of the flooding at this point in Montana. We also have purple in there. That's winter weather advisory, mainly west of the divide, does include Madison County as well. So we are looking at the potential of some snow in the mountains, uh, mainly dealing with milder temperatures for the morning. But we are going to see some damp roadways, maybe even some light snow. That's been falling at times this morning in Butte. We'll talk about what you can expect today and a bit of a warm-up by the end of the week. Uh, your complete forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Matt. 634 tragedy topping our news this half hour. 21-year-old Sheridan man dead after a fatal crash near Alder on Saturday morning. Montana Highway Patrol responded to the call just before 3 o'clock Saturday morning for reports of a single vehicle crash on Highway 287 between Alder and Luray. Single occupant of the vehicle was life flighted to Providence St. Patrick Hospital in Missoula, where he passed away yesterday afternoon. Madison County Sheriff Roger Thompson said alcohol may have been a factor in that crash. The victim was not wearing a seatbelt. That incident does remain under investigation by Montana Highway Patrol. We will update you as we receive more information. Also, according to a report done by Headwaters Economics, Gallatin County has lost more open space than any other county in Montana since 1990. MTN's Medeiros Babb goes on special assignment and tells us what this means for farmers in the area. Oh yeah, 
We worry about a lot, right? This land has been used for agriculture for four generations. Pretty soon, it will be five as owner Walt Sales passes it on to his daughter. It's, it's a great feeling as a valley when you look at it and having that opportunity to pass it on and continue what I think it's added to this valley, it, it does. It gives you hope. Farmers build canals that transport water from the West Gallatin River onto their property. This canal behind me is dry right now, but in a couple of weeks it will fill with water, which will then come into this headgate right next to me for the farmers to be able to use water for their crops. But as Gallatin continues to grow, water becomes scarce. We're standing here by the river and we're worrying about how much is going to be there, how fast is it going to come, and you bet the growth definitely is on top of those worry lists. A report released by Headwater Economics says from 1990 to 2016, over 90,000 acres of open land in Gallatin County was bought for development purposes. That's more than any other county in Montana. Walt says farmers can be targeted by developers to sell their land and water rights because of the value. Forcing a certain individual into a either the back against the wall or into a corner, maybe without options, in my eyes, isn't the best way to go. Sales says all communities need growth to maintain a healthy economy. He says the county, city, and ag are all starting to come together to find a water solution for the next generation. In Manhattan, Medeiros Bab, MTN News. Interesting stat here. Medeiros tells us agriculture is the only Montana industry that has consistently lost jobs since 2001. Shifting gears just a bit, researchers in California developing an autonomous drone ambulance that could help get people to a hospital or out of harm's way in an emergency. CBS's Chris Martinez shows us how it works. Taking off in three, two, one. It's technology designed to save lives. Researchers at the California Institute of Technology describe this autonomous ambulance as the future of emergency response. We're calling it actually a personal rescue system. Professor Maury Garib says the self-flying rescue drone has been in development for two years. It's designed to rapidly fly a patient to a hospital or rendezvous point with a doctor. Researchers are testing this prototype, but they envision the life-size vehicle transporting people facing medical emergencies like heart attacks or strokes and airlifting injured or trapped victims from hard-to-reach disaster areas, including wildfires or flood zones. This is basically a the hatch door that can open up. Sensors inside will monitor the patient's vital signs during flight. With this one-of-a-kind wall, researchers are simulating nearly every weather condition to test how the drone responds. For now, they're using a one-fifth scale model, but the actual drone will be the size of a small car, and the final version will be piloted by an artificial intelligence system. That can basically negotiate with situations reason and make the best decision in order to save the life of the person that he carries. Chicken wings. Researchers hope to test a larger model before the end of 2018. They predict a full-size system could be in use within five years. Chris Martinez, CBS News, Pasadena, California. Now researchers say batteries powering the drone ambulance should allow the vehicle to fly for up to 20 minutes per trip. Love that. We'll see how that technology turns out. We're going to take a quick break here on Montana this morning. When we come back, we head under the big sky, do a little history lesson with longtime member of the Winston Fly Rod Company. Uh, we also have live studio guest, Congressman Greg Gianforte in the studio, sitting down talking with David Parker. We'll have that. But first, here's a quick look at what's coming up at 7 on CBS This Morning. Good morning ahead here on CBS This Morning. We're just south of the U.S.-Mexico border, where nearly 200 people are hoping to seek asylum after caravanning from Central America. And what a planned T-Mobile Sprint merger could mean for all cell phone users. We'll see you right at 7.